this is my pop's computer and it's an i7 tension rtx 3080 and i built this for him about a year ago we put in a new power supply a corsair rm 850x and while on vacation he reaches out to me and he says hey my computer is not turning on um tried to do some quick diagnosis over the phone while on vacation um really couldn't dive too much into it so he decides to take it to a computer shop yeah not good the fortunate thing is, is that they were big on free diagnosis, so we didn't lose on that one, but he takes it to the local computer shop. They have it for, I think, two days, and they end up telling him the power supply is bad and the motherboard is bad. The chances of that, mm, I'm not buying it. It can happen, but I'm not buying it. So he tells me about what they say. We dive into it, and in fact, it was not that, and it's actually a simple, real easy fix. We were able to fix it we were able to fix it for free, get it back up and running, no parts required, which those are also the best repairs. So in this video, we're gonna go over what to look for if your computer's not turning on, quick, easy fixes, a way to save money, and stress it again, get a second opinion. So before we get started, let's get a little light. And let's talk about what's going on. So. Typically, when a computer is not turning on, it could be a power supply. Sometimes it's as simple as the switch got accidentally uh, hit in the back and it's in the off position. I've seen that happen. Yes, a dead motherboard could cause that type of issue, but you got to start with the basics. First thing I like to do is take a look at the connectors for the power right over here, the power button. These are fine, minus the little trick that we did, and I'll talk about that in just a sec, but double check your connectors. Next thing too make sure that all your cables are just properly plugged in i mean things happen people move their computers they drop them over things come loose make sure things are seated i usually start with that of course to verify the customer's complaint but we start with that if all that looks pretty good then we got to dive a little deeper now a good tool to have of course is we got to be able to test the power supply um, a power supply tester this one is okay but you know i wouldn't bet my pennies on it and here's why. This one pretty much tells you if there's an obvious fault with the power supply, it will turn it on, send power to the computer. But the issue I find with this one, everything might read good. And you might think, oh yeah, you know, power supply is good. But I have seen uh, certain situations where the computer boots up and as soon as it gets a load, the power supply craps out. So this will tell you that it's good enough to turn on, but the minute it gets a load, it might shut off and this won't give you that information. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, once we kind of verified that the power supply is good, then we got to dive into the motherboard. But before I dive deep into that, what I like to do is, and this may sound stupid and simple, folks, check your power button. Hear me out. In the case of this one, the power button is bad. It doesn't work. So what we did was, because this computer has a reset button, we went ahead and unplugged the pin from the power and plugged it into the reset button. So let's go ahead and show you. Now the computer has power, obviously not working. How do we turn it on? Reset button, simple, easy repair. Before we go ahead and start dissecting the motherboard, memory, CPU, all that type of stuff, check the power button, especially on these older cases. They do go bad. Now you're probably saying, well, I don't have a reset button. There are some options. Let's dive into that. Another option you can do, and just kind of show proof of concept, this is the power switch. We disconnected this one because the, um, the pin or the pad is bad on this case. What you can do is take it apart, clean it with some electrical part cleaner, and sometimes that does bring it around. But in this case, that one is completely faulty. And what you can do is you could take a screwdriver, a clip, or something like that, and we could jump those two pins, which right over here and that will turn it on so let's go ahead and give this thing power just like so go ahead and jump these two pins so now our computer is turning on obviously you want to have your monitor plugged in to make sure that you do have a display so keep that in mind and just to confirm my diagnosis we got a screen everything seems to be working so yes it does not need a power supply it does not need a motherboard and it just seems like this shop was trying to get over it so now I did offer my dad a newer case, but he loves this case. It has the whole hot swappable action for his SATAs and all that type of stuff. So he doesn't want to get rid of this. And then he still 
Um, has the DVD drive, which I don't think that's plugged in. Yeah, it's not plugged in, but he doesn't want to get rid of that stuff. Whatever. Now, his biggest complaint, I mean, as silly as it is, is that he doesn't like pressing this reset button. It's too small, whatever. So what is the option? And this is the option that you can consider if you have a case with a bad power button and doesn't have a reset button. One, get a new case, but in this case, he doesn't want a new case. Number two, if you're trying to save money, a decent case can cost about 60 to to $100. And that's if you're doing it yourself. Obviously, if you're gonna pay a company to do it, I mean, at that point, they're gonna charge you whatever fee they have, or you can do something cheap, easy, and simple like we're gonna do now. We're gonna add our own power button. So pick this up on the Amazon, T-E-U-C-E-R, Tuser, whatever. It's a cool little power button, kind of like a keyboard. I like it. Two connectors, one for your LED, one for your power switch. So let's go ahead, let's plug this in, and let's kind of see how we're gonna do it where it doesn't look too terrible and we don't have to chop up the case. I think what I wanna do is probably put it up on the top that way it's easier for him. I mean, we could also put it right over here, but I think he's not a big fan of that. So I think we could put it up on the top and then with the extra slack, he could probably run this wire on his desk and that would be fine or just run it somewhere where it's convenient for him. So I think we're gonna go that route. And what I'm thinking is, is that these holes should be big enough where I could feed these through. We could run this in there, run the cable down through the bottom, plug it in and we should be golden. So I think that's the plan that we're gonna do. Um, another option too, is um, you could cut a hole on one of these uh, slots right over here and that would work. But also kind of keep in mind that if you're gonna cut a hole, you wanna kind of make sure that this thing is smooth so the wire doesn't get chafed and cut. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I think that's gonna be the easiest option. So um, the middle should be, I think right around here. I'm thinking probably, uh, yep, yeah, that should be close enough. And these fit perfect. Now, you might not have this option with whatever case that you might have. Um, like I said, cut one of those other slots. Maybe drill a hole. I mean, you got options. Just kind of figure out how pretty you want to make it. But this is feeding perfectly. And my whole thought is that way and if we wanted to, we could really just put the Velcro right over here and that would actually look pretty nice. I'm not gonna do that. If this was my case, um, I would do it this way, but I think he wants to feed the slack. I'm not gonna commit it to over here. Let's go ahead and get these out of the way. And now we can actually plug in the reset button where it belongs. So let's move that over here. Uh, HD LED, pull this out. Make sure we match up our positive and negative. And I promise you this is easier to do when you're not recording it. Just not trying to get the big digits in the way. Okay, let's put the power switch right next to it. And now we're gonna plug our reset switch right back in here. All right, now that should work. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, whoops, always forget that. Power. Ooh, blue. But there we go. Now, what I am gonna do is actually take this zip tie and hear me out. Take it, I'm gonna put it like so, tighten it. Make sure these wires are not in the way of anything. Okay, and right up here, we're gonna give it a stop point. And what this zip tie is gonna do is, when they tug on it, because it's tight against the cable, it's gonna pull on the zip tie and keep it from ripping out on the bottom. Just a little extra security, you know? So I think right over here is pretty good. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna do this for yourself, make sure this cable is not in a place where this extra slack could get caught up in these fans. I got these right over here. This is my dad's computer, so he's actually a little tech savvy. But all he's gotta do is just pull it out, 
just like so. Oop, I already turned it on. This will stop it from going past where it should. And then he can mount this anywhere he wants. Like I said, if this was my case, I'd probably put a little piece of tape and that would look really good right over there. But I think he wants to put that on his desk and there should be enough slack. If not, we'll revisit this. So this computer was misdiagnosed, quoted $250 for a motherboard and a power supply. Crazy. Which makes me wonder what kind of motherboard and power supply they would have used because a power supply, at least of this quality, is about 100 bucks. A motherboard probably would have been another 100 bucks. Where are they making their profit margins? Maybe they got it cheaper. Maybe they were going to use cheaper components or they just had stuff lying around. Who knows what they were trying to do? A simple, easy diagnosis of checking the power button saved money. Unfortunately, there are shops out there that do stuff like that, and it is unfortunate. I'm a firm believer of take care of your customers. They'll come back and they'll take care of you. And as far as this, if you're in this situation where your computer is not powering on before you start condemning things, check your power button, check your connectors like this. Um, unplug the power switch button right over here. Find out the pin. Every motherboard is different. Jump it. If the computer fires up, there's a good chance that it's just this button is bad. And if the button is bad, plug in the reset button instead. And if your case doesn't have the reset button, buy something like this. Quick, easy diagnosis, folks. Start with the basics. If the basics check out, then dive in a little deeper. With all that being said, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. Have you ever run into a situation like this? What are your thoughts on shops like that? And have you ever done something like this just to save the customer money? One thing I will say, full disclosure, be transparent, show them the pros and the cons. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and as always, we'll see what we come up with next.